Hey, welcome. In this lesson, we're going to implement a simple client-side router that changes the displayed content of the URL depending on the hash. So I click Home, brings us to the Home page. About brings us to the About page. Contact brings us to the Contact page. And as we can see within the HTML, we've got a totally different HTML content that's contained within there. And when we're using this navigation and we're implementing this router, it allows us to map out the URL hashes and return back the corresponding content. So it listens for the hash events. So we've got a window advent listener on the window listening for that. And it's a simple implementation to demonstrate how client-side routing can be achieved without relying on external libraries. This exercise, we're gonna implement a simple client-side router that changes the displayed content based on the URL hash. So first of all, let's go into our HTML. And what we're going to do is we're going to add some navigation into the HTML. Uh, so we can set that directly into an element here. So I'm going to just have this and give it a class of output. And then we can select that within our JavaScript and update that. So we're going to create a navigation area and then also an output area there. And that's just going to be above this content area. And actually what we can do is we can do it below as well. So having that there, now we can go over to the JavaScript and add in our simple route. So first of all, we want to start with a class and I'm going to create a class called router. And within the router class, using a constructor, we're going to construct the routes that we going to have within this application and taking this routes and selecting them and we're just going to equal this routes into whatever we've got as the argument for routes and then on the window add event listener and the event that we're listening for is going to be actually the hash change event uh, so this is going to be triggered whenever the hash changes so using this and then creating a function to handle route change we're going to have binding the current value into this and that should be actually bind. So binding this and then using this and handle the route change function. And then also within the class let's handle handle route change function and then within there we're going to handle whatever the route change is so setting up a const variable and grabbing the window location and taking the hash and doing a slice. So slicing the value out. And you can also console log this so that we can see whatever that value is that we're outputting into the. And then taking the const route and this routes value and using returning back the whatever the hash value is that we've got for that routes and i'll explain this code in more detail as we run the test of it and run the completion of it so within the document we get element by id and so we're getting the element with an id of app and then update the inner HTML of that element to be whatever we've got being returned back from the route. Otherwise, we're going to place within the document and get element by ID, element ID with the app, and set the inner HTML. And we're going to set this to 404 not found. So that way, if the route is not found if the page is not found if there's any errors then we can just have a not found value there so let's set up the routes that we have so setting up a value const routes and these are going to create the routes that we're going to be using so within the home is going to route to whatever page we want or whatever content we want to output for the home so here we can do an h1 and we'll do home page. So we're going to just have some simple values here that we're returning back. And actually, it should be comma separated because it's within the object. 
and then whatever uh, other routes that you want to have. So we want to have an about route and that's going to return back the about content and we want to have a contact route and then let's just update these to match. So this will output the about page and then this will update the and output the content page. And now let's set up the router. So within the router, we're using the new router and passing in the routes object into that. And then we also want to add in the HTML for the document. So selecting the document, and actually we can overwrite the entire body with the inner HTML. So that way it will look like the pages are changing and we want a navigation bar for all of the pages. So I'm going to use the template literals. So those are the back ticks to the left of most keyboards, of the one of the most keyboards. And then here we can have the nav bar and we'll close up the nav bar. So we'll write a little bit of HTML. And you can also create the elements as well if you want. Uh, so this is just a quicker way to do this. So we're going to reference this hash as home so that it matches with our home page object. And actually I'm going to use the double quotes for this one. So it's going to write in the code for home and we can just label it home and close off the anchor tag. And then we can do the other three as well, the other three routes that we have. So that will be the about and the contact. So let's just update these to match. So contact and in the navigation, this will be contact. And then this will be about. And actually the order doesn't matter, but just to be consistent with the other order that we have for the routes, I'm gonna keep, order them this way. And then uh, also outputting, what we want to output is we want to have a div with an ID of app. And so the, this way we can select the element with the ID of app and that we could write the content into it. And then lastly, let's use the router and we'll do the handle route change function so that we can handle any route changes that we have. Oh, and it does look like it's throwing an error. So let's actually update the HTML of the body of the element just before the class so that we're not calling an element with an ID that doesn't exist. And now we see that we've got the home about contact within our web page. And let's click clicking some of these buttons. So that's the about page, that's the home, and that's the contact. So going into the page elements, there's the HTML that we've written and that's the app ID that we required. You can also add that in uh, manually into your HTML as well, and you can select a page element to update. So if you want to update the output content there, you can do that as well. So that way it would be existing already, or if you want to do it all in JavaScript, that's also an option that we've done here. And so now as I click the navigation items, we can see that the HTML content of the page actually changes as well. And that's how you can create a simple routing application. So let's go through a little bit of the code here that we have. So router class initializes with routes object and maps the URL hashes that we have within the navigation here. So that's gonna be the function that restores the corresponding HTML content. The constructor within the class. So this sets up the event listener for the hash change, which triggers whenever the URL hash changes. This event is crucial to our router in order to detect the navigation changes. So whenever we make the clicks, that's where that's being detected. We can handle the route change. So that's the function, the method that's sitting within the class. And this extracts the URL. So basically it removes out the hash and leaving the character lines. So that's where we're doing the slice. So it's just removes out the hash that's within the URL and that's where we've got the output of just simply the hash. So there's no hash symbol in front of it. And when we look up the corresponding routes, it matches with what is found, and then it knows what values to return back. So these are the values that we're returning back within the routes, and that's being output into the element with the ID of app on the page. 
and then the rest is just setting up the routes here within the routes function and then the routes initializing is done here where we're passing the routes into the class.